Now faith. Say now faith. Now faith. This is not the same as next week faith. Right. Next year faith. Coming soon to a life near you faith. This is now faith. Now faith. Okay. Right. It's, it, 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 it's, it has a moment. It says it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Right. Now in the NIV it says now faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what we do not see. So there's a certainty about faith, a guarantee about faith, a trusting confidence about faith, mm -hmm. right? The actual word faith, if you look it up, it's, it's pisteo. It's talking about being fully persuaded, totally convinced, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're totally convinced of what we hope for, in other words, we're totally convinced of what God says that we have is true, guess what's going to happen? We're going to see some evidence, there's gonna be some evidence of that conviction. Mm -hmm. I like what it says in the Amplified though. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. It's kind of like if you have a car or something, right? You yeah. have a title for it. You have, that's your proof of ownership. Right. Do you know your faith is your proof of ownership of the promises of God? Think about that for a moment. Your trust and confidence in what God says as being true more than what the, your five senses say is true is your proof of ownership. Yeah. He says, it is uh, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things that we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real, fact that's not revealed to the senses. Now that's just really important because it shows us that faith operates or it, it causes us to access what is done in a spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. You know, it says we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is literally how we reach into the spirit realm and we drag back into the natural the promises of God that rightfully belong to us. So with that in mind, if I just deny my reality, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. You've heard people who have, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm just going to deny my reality and, and I'm going to call that faith. Does, how does that work? It's denial. I mean... Seriously, this is how faith gets a bad name, right? When, when people go around saying something, it's evident to everybody else that, you know, well, you've got something going on there. And actually, it makes us as Christians look a little bit crazy. Let, let, me just, let me just help you with this. You can acknowledge that you have an issue with something and, and, and saying, and I, I see that. I see that pain. You know, we do this when, we, when we're giving altar calls for salvation. I see that hand, right? I see that hand. I see what's going on there. You know, I, I recognise that I have a pain here. I recognise I have a problem here. That's not a lack of faith. Well, a la what, what we need to do is make sure that recognising that doesn't give it a higher priority than the, the truth of God's word. You see that? I, we, can rec we can buy faith. We can recognise that we've got something going on in our flesh. How many people can, can testify that at some point in their life they've had something going on in their flesh? They knew about it. Oh, yeah. Right? They knew about it. But... What people do is they fall into that trap of the enemy where they don't want to say anything. They don't want to, they don't want to get a prayer of agreement. They don't, I mean, they don't know what to do, so they just find themselves getting into fear rather than faith sure. because they're trying to deny it. Yeah, or make a bad confession. Or make a bad confession. Man, oh. The confession police, oh. right? I had a woman once come up to me, and she, and, um, she, had this, uh, <laughs> she had this thing. I said, my feet are killing me. I mean, I've been walking around all day. She said, don't say that. Don't say that. You'll be dead. You'll be dead in no time. I said, what do you think's gonna happen? My shoes are literally gonna come and strangle me? My feet are killed. I'm like, can we just bring some, you know, common sense into yeah, this? Yeah, chill out a little bit. Well, it's important for us to understand what faith is. It's important for us to understand what faith is not. Because this is a real misconception with people. And just admitting that we have a problem is not a lack of faith. Yeah. The problem it happens when we, um, when we allow that issue, that symptom, to take higher priority in our life than what God says about it. That's right. We let that, that truth, it might be a truth that we have a symptom, yeah. but it doesn't trump the truth of God's word. Yeah. Right? So we just, it's just really, amen, it's just really what we place of higher value in our life. What, we, what are we putting our trust and confidence in? Yeah. People say, well, you know, you've got to put faith in the doctors. You, I'm, not, I'm not against doctors and nurses. I was a nurse, okay? But they can only test for what they can see or measure in the natural. Yeah. It's completely limited. They deal with facts. They, deal, they do with natural facts only. And mm -hmm. praise God for the medical profession or a lot of Christians would be dead. Amen. Okay, let's, let's just say it as it is. But they can't test what's in your spirit. That's right. They have no benchmark for the measure of faith that's on the inside of you. Yeah. And when we come to understand what faith is and what faith is not, we won't find ourselves in that awkward no man's land in the middle 
of a hoping and a wishing and really wanting something to be true, but that get, get, getting disappointed because it's always seems so out of reach. Yeah, that's so good. So we could literally say that faith, true faith is not denying the facts or denying the reality. It's just denying it a place in our hearts. Yeah. See, we're going to supersede the reality with the truth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say, well, I'm just trying to be honest. I'm just trying to be, you know, real. Well, no, what you're trying to be is put your focus on what's carnal. What's really true is the word of God. Right. That's the truth. John 17 and verse 17 says, thy word, O Lord, is truth. Well, here's the thing that's so great about God is everything, first of all, but um, <laughs> the truth always trumps reality. Yep. Amen. Reality is reality, but it's not greater than the truth. Mm -hmm. And what God says, his report always trumps that medical report, yeah. that natural or factual information. That's true. So the doctors and the nurses and all those people are not our enemies. They're coming with natural information. We have a choice mm -hmm. what we're going to believe. Yeah. What's going to take residence within our hearts? We have a choice whether we're going to identify with the facts mm -hmm. or whether we're going to identify with the truth. Amen. And when the truth trumps reality in our hearts and in our lives, we see an outcome that is completely supernatural. Absolutely, we do. 